uh, welcome to my workshop using SF in dialogue surrounding men's mental health, equalities and youth leadership. So um, I was originally going to be doing this with uh, a colleague, but he's pulled out. So uh, I'm doing it on my own. So forgive me if it all goes a bit <laughs> big dong, but no, I'm sure it'll be fine. So thank you for coming along, Jackie. And, uh, and yeah, hello to everybody who's seeing this in the future. <laughs> so yeah, if I can work out the tech. So today I'll be covering um, who Boys in Mind, Girls in Mind 2 are, sort of what we do and how we go about doing it. And then I'll sort of touch on SF and how that's worked its way into um, BIM GMT. And then why I think SF and men's mental health equalities and youth leadership really work hand in hand. And then um, I'll have a little Q&A session, although we'll see how that goes <laughs> when we get nearer it. And then I will show a... Um, one of our films that we've produced over lockdown uh, as a sort of way to close it off. And yeah, so we'll see how we go. So just a health warning, I, I will be at some point talking about suicide in this um, workshop. So, you know, if, the, if at any time it does feel like you might need support or some somewhere to talk, here's a list of um, places that you can go in and, and speak to. Uh, I know a lot of these are sort of UK based. So United for Global Mental Health, the link at the bottom, uh, if you click on there, it gives a list of all the countries and all their sort of mental health support. So if you um, do need support and, uh, you know, are not in the UK, you can look on there and it should uh, come up with your relevant support line. So yeah, do take a look on there if it's, if it's needed. So yeah, so here's the Boys in Mind team. So it's made up of a lot of uh, young people and uh, sort of professionals. Uh, so we've had sort of school head teachers like Richard at the top left, um, filmmakers, uh, school just school teachers. So Jim at the top middle, Kate who was our coordinator, who's uh, top right, and she was PSHE lead for Baines, uh, Bath and North East Somerset, our local area. And so it, it's a sort of a whole array of professionals in, uh, and supporting the young people who are along the bottom here as well as um, Lucia, Eli and uh, Alex in the middle. Um, and the thing about Boys in Mind is it's really young people led. And when I say young people led, it's authentically young people led. So it's authentically young people taking the lead. Um, and it's, when I say sort of authentically, you hear a lot about youth voice and young people's sort of involvement. And it's very, I feel a lot of the time tokenistic and not properly taken seriously. So the difference with Boys in Mind is that young people say what they want to happen. And that happens whilst we're supported by the professionals in the organisation. Um, and so, yeah, it's really young people steering the uh, direction of Boys in Mind. So we've got our two primary champions as well here, Finn and Jackson, who um, are two primary school children. So they're uh, under the age of 11 is um, what that is, that they will be in primary school. And um, they were actually involved in a film project uh, that Boys in Mind originally did, and they sort of wanted to be involved even more. Um, and so uh, sort of got involved with Boys in Mind, said they wanted to be involved, and we created a role primary champion for them. And they help us uh, to advise on primary school work. Um, so they'll sort of help us with what they'd like to see in primary schools, what they think would be good. And they've actually done some fundraising for us. So they recently did a big walk and actually raised over seven hundred pounds for the both of us uh, for for us, which has been amazing. So thank you to both Finn and Jackson. And there's a couple of quotes from them on the screen as well. Um, just see how wonderful they are. <laughs> so what we do, um, boys in mind. So this is our mission, vision, mission, and values. And so we empower children, specifically boys and young men, to talk about emotions. Mm -hmm really express their vulnerability in a safe and healthy manner. Um, and so the way we do that is through working with schools, working with organisations to um, challenge these stereotypes and stigma around mental health and then pre ultimately prevent suicide. And it's Boys in Mind has just become, because it's youth-led, a platform for children and young people to talk about issues affecting them. So our sort of values, and this is where it ties into SF, is we work in a compassionate and solution-focused way. And through, you know, we embrace and celebrate diversity and promote positive images of boys and young men. So you might ask how, sort of how we do that. So we work, like I said, work in schools. So we've got 14 lead schools um, where we work with uh, 
students, we work with staff members, we work with senior leadership um, all across the school just to involve them. Um, and how we do that, so along the bottom we've got our film slash podcast for one. So film is our sort of primary way of getting involved um, with people. And I'll sort of go to the next slide and show you uh, some of the films that we've done. And film is uh, one of the, yeah, so it's, it's, it's done in a way that might be slightly different to how other people would do it. So we would go into a school to, say if we were doing it in a school, for example, we'd go into a school and say, talk a bit about Boys in Mind. We sort of challenge stereotypes through promoting these resources, get, see if people were interested. If we got a sort of little group together, we then go in with the camera, with the film equipment, and basically leave them to it. Um, we sort of give them a li the little basics in how to how to film, but then we give them the camera and let them decide because it's then at the forefront. It's just then that they are, are the experts and they decide what they want to do. So they'll decide who's asking the questions, what the questions are, who's in front of the camera, who's behind the camera, um, and it's really just a, again a platform for young people to express what they want to express. And I think that's why a lot of them had so much of an impact because so many young people can resonate with these kind of films because they are made by young people, not made by sort of prescriptive other things that have been put on them. Um, so podcasts are another thing that we've been doing recently, uh, which has only just sort of started recently, but they've been really impactful. They've sort of covered topics um, like identifying as LGBT and mental health, um, mental health and autism uh, and burnout. We've covered a sort of range of topics with that. Uh, but again, it's a sort of platform for young people to chat about these kind of things and just share these sort of things to know that you're not alone when you're talking about that. So talking of that is we, we also do media appearances where that be, might be on local news, um, local radio, for example. And again, we talk about the resources that we have out there and talk and promote messages to show that you're not alone. So we do workshops and webinars as well, which is just like I'm doing now. So a workshop. Um, and I was lucky enough, actually, for, in my journey to deliver a keynote speech at the Children and Young People's Mental Health Summit. So that was really huge platform for me to talk about issues affecting me and get it out to a, a wide, um, wide area. And it was really impactful because a lot of people hadn't heard it come from a young person before. So I think it's so impactful that we get young people up to these levels to, so we can really hear what the issues are rather than making these decisions beforehand. And then the final thing we make, uh, although we do more, is blogs and documents. So blogs, uh, we've got a whole section on our website of um, personal stories, sort of, uh, of gaming and mental health, uh, lockdown, how people have coped with lockdown. And then we've produced documents. So this one here I've take, got the little picture of is a whole school approach, a primary whole school approach document. So that was actually Finn and Jackson, our two primary champions, came together and helped us draw up that document, which was sort of tips and uh, tricks to how to go about developing a whole school approach towards mental health and well-being for a primary school. Uh, and so we'll sort of keep that on our website and use it as a resource um, if people would like to, yeah, use that as um, something that, and you, you can all find this on our website, www.boysinmind.co.uk. So here's a couple of our films, or sorry, three films. So Beach and Cliff, a whole school approach to mental health and well-being. So that was actually um, the uh, school that was talked about in the SFIO plenary earlier on. Um, and we did a film documenting basically how this school had uh, taken steps to, yeah, getting a whole school approach to mental health and well-being. One of those parts being a solution focused section. Um, so do take a look at that. It's about 15 minutes long on our website. Starting a conversation, the bottom left film was a fantastic film made by... Um, some university students of how uh, you can create and start conversations about mental well-being, mental health in a university setting, and what kind of things you could start a conversation with about that. And then the bottom right one was uh, Enfield School for Deaf Young People. And that was a, a great film um, talking about, again, sort of how they cope with challenges that they um, go through in life. And, and it was just such a really impactful and really good film that I highly recommend taking a look at so that's all on the website again so sf within boys and mind girls mind too so this is where it then ties back into the sf aspect so i think 
<laughs> SF, as you can hear, because we're putting young people at the forefront and treating the young people as the experts in their own change. And, you know, we're really putting them at the forefront. That's why it fits so well with SF, because there's this SF obviously assumption of the person that you're talking to is the expert in their own mind and the expert in their own life. So I think that's sort of a why it's sort of slotted into Boys in Mind so perfectly. So how we've weaved it further in, so we've done team training. So Tara Gretton, our resident SF guru, who's a good friend of mine, um, is of SF trainers and Solution Revolution, has actually trained up six of our team members to be SF um, qualified. So that's three adults, actually three young people, including me, um, who've been trained up in SF to really, again, push for more SF in the organisation and have SF conversations within all that we do around uh, Boys in Mind, Girls Mind too. We bring SF into team meetings. So team meetings are always guided by an SF question. So best hopes for the meeting or, or um, what have you been pleased to notice about your work over the last few months? Those kind of things empower and um, build on our team members' strengths to really uh, you know, solidify change and, and go on to the, towards the future. Resource development, SS used again. Uh, so that's sort of film planning meetings. So for example, my uh, meetings that I'm holding for a film that I'm developing at the moment, that was done by um, an SF question that I asked. Uh, we sort of didn't really know where to go. And I sort of said, well, if this film were to be useful to our target audience, which was young LGBT people, what would we convey? And immediately it was just like, well, the, the thoughts started coming in and it was SF that was the tool and the catalyst for this kind of things being put together, I suppose. Supervision and mentoring. So um, for me, uh, we have uh, just started a new scheme in the, in, uh, the organization where we have youth, the youth advisors, so the young people being mentored by uh, an adult and being asked SF questions. So this might be again, um, what have you been pleased to notice about your work since we've last met? Um, and again, it's a sort of SF script um, to focus on what's going well, what you're coping with. Um, and then, yeah, just it's still a mentoring session. Oh, sorry, I've just got one, someone entered the waiting room. Hi, Sha. So yeah, so I've just been talking about SF within Boys in Mind. Um, so I've touched on, it takes place in team training, team meetings, resource development, supervision and mentoring. So um, what have you been pleased to notice about yourself since we've our last meeting? Um, and yeah, so that's been taking place in our ment sort of mentoring system as we've gone on. And then mission, vision, mission and values. So um, which I showed earlier, which was, um, it's explicitly says to work in a solution focused way. And so we take it as a key part of how we work and make sure that we're remaining an SF organization in everything that we do. And so we champion that approach. So we're, um, you know, I'm actually in discussions about the strategy for the next year. And one of the things that I'm really passionate about is that SF presence, so to speak, about Boys in Mind is increasing. And so for example, we're looking to do more team training about SF to get more team members trained up, um, as well as perhaps a page explaining what SF is on the website to then further um, expand the presence of SF, I suppose, in Boys in Mind. So, and uh, I've actually been asked to lead on a film project about talking about SF with the organisation. So we're not stopping the momentum that we've got with it, really. Um, but the important thing here with all of this is that SF is so versatile and solution focus is so versatile that it doesn't have to just be used in this therapeutic setting. It can be used in these everyday conversations. It can be used in team meetings. It can be used in mentoring and all these kind of different ways. And yet it still has that capacity to, to really zoom in on someone's strengths and capitalize change. So SF with men's mental health policies and youth leadership. So this is the sort of why does it work kind of thing. Um, and I sort of really thought about this for a while, actually, to, to why SF fits so well. And, and so I sort of touched on it a bit already. 
um, but Boys in Mind was sort of originally set up and actually run by adults. So it wasn't originally this youth-led, truly youth-led um, sort of momentum. And so it wasn't until our coordinator hey, at the time... Will, sorry, could you make me co-host so I can share the link with Tara because she's trying to get in but can't find the link. That is fine. There we go. Sorry. No worries. I should have made you co-host. Thank you. All right. So, um, yeah, so SF and Men's Mental Health Policies and Youth Leadership. So that's the, the real nuts and bolts and why it works. So Boys in Mind was originally set up by um, adults and with adults at the helm of it and adults at the helm of, you know, still a really great initiative of uh, what we, we were originally set up anyway to, to um, reduce stigma surrounding male mental health and prevent suicides. But it wasn't until Kate, our coordinator at the time, had a light bulb moment of, wait, hold on a second. If we're talking about men and mental health, why don't we get men talking about it rather than us sort of telling them what they should be thinking and what they should be doing why don't we get them to do it for us and why don't we get support them and let them be the expert in their own life to do that and so that was where it was born you know the sf uh sorry the just a bit tara that was um hello tara <laughs> Yeah, so that was where it was born, the kind of um, notion of putting young men at the forefront. And so young men were brought in, and uh, it was uh, Gabe and Alex, actually, two good friends of mine who went to the same school, Beach and Cliff, uh, that school that I mentioned earlier. And they were brought in and sort of um, invited to, to, to talk about change that they would like to say, talk about and be treated as an expert, really. Um, and so by doing that, they didn't necessarily know it at the time, but it was sort of inherently SF because they were being treated as the expert in their own lives and they were being treated as the, the um, people of their own change, so to speak. And so it just sort of, yeah, it really worked to cause this change to, to fighting this stigma. And, and it was sort of just went on from there, really. Um, when we had the sort of the, the real experts in the in the in the driving seat, I suppose. Um, going to equalities. So for me, I, I can talk. A, <laughs> this is one of the fields of SF I love the most, and I can natter on for days about it. Um, but really, so I, if I talk about my own experience as a gay man, being um, sort of asked what your best hopes is is not necessarily something you're asked that often. And so for me, when I went in to have um, mental health support for the first time, I'd lost my mum to cancer uh, sort of half a year beforehand. And I went into the therapy room, not really thinking of that, although, you know, the, the, the therapist, so to speak, was unaware of that. And I went in and sort of the therapist said to me, Susie Ingram, she said, oh, I'm going to try this thing I've been learning. It's called a uh, solution-focused approach. Are you okay if I do this? I said, yeah, not a problem. I'm, I'm here to for support. I don't really care what you use. And the first question she asked me was this question. I can't exactly remember how it was, but it was, what are your best hopes from today's session? And I suppose if I'd gone in and perhaps gone for a, someone who would practice a different approach, they would have perhaps gone straight for the thought that my the reason I was there was to do with my situation with grief and support you know thoughts around my mum whereas my answer to that best hopes question was no it's to come out as gay and it's like whoa that was like surprising for me to say that and this best hope question actually stretched sort of well to use the words of Mark McCurgo stretched the world stretched my world as a client stretched my world to being able to envision that and envision that possibility which I didn't think was possible but again, it links back to the solution focused assumption of the problem, the solution might not be associated with the problem. And that was exactly the case for me. And so that's why I think SF works so well supporting me because, my, you know, it fits sort of with all these different things. Um, but again, the best hope question 
allows you to envision a future which you might not have envisioned beforehand. So, you know, to talk a bit wider about equalities, it could be to do with societal change or combating systemic racism, for example, and how we can make steps towards that. Um, and, you know, it, it can be something that you hadn't thought of before. And this best hope question enables you to think about it, I suppose. Again, SF being inherently respectful because the client is treated as the expert, is non judgmental which was really helpful for me as a questioning young LGBTQ man, because I didn't feel ever judged or um, treated as lesser because of that. Um, yeah, so I suppose that's how I could link it in. And actually, uh, Rebecca Auer, who's um, an SF practitioner in Texas, she's got a book I would highly recommend. I'm not doing a little advert there, but it's using SFBT with the LGBTQ plus community. <laughs> Hold it up, I should just take a picture. <laughs> um, and yeah, so she is a master of talking about how you can use these subtle word changes to really allow people who feel disempowered and um, marginalised to really allow them to envision a preferred future that is not bounded by sort of all these kind of things and can really cause a lot of change a lot of positive, impactful change. So yeah, that was just a slight detour, but that's what I thought. <laughs> um, and then my sort of final point is about youth leadership. So um, sort of my thoughts here, I suppose, SF allowed me um, as a young person, because actually in the school that I was at, um, a, lot of, a lot of teachers were trained in SF. Um, they were aware of the notion of genuine listening mm. and actually in boys in mind they were trained at sf so they were aware of this notion of genuine listening and the difference between that was they were listening to um they were listening to understand rather than listening to respond and they were really there to appreciate what i had to say and so i felt appreciated and empowered to cause my own change because i was being listened to and so they put me as a young person at the forefront and they were listening to me through this genuine listening that we'd learned through SF. Um, and I suppose you could sort of look at asking what our hopes are. When they would ask us what our hopes are, it allowed the organisation to be youth-led because they would genuinely listen to and then acted upon by these sort of professionals in their capacities. And yeah, it was driven by the young people, what we would like to see. And... Um, Noticing strengths is so empowering. I know we always get, it's, it's something that we don't necessarily think about when we do SF because it's just mm. a part of doing SF, but noticing strengths is so, so empowering. And you know, for me, I, I sort of started this, this journey doing uh, workshops and public speaking and all this kind of stuff when I was at my previous school and I, sort of, I did a um, speech talking about my own experiences in mental health. And it was where Kate Murphy spotted me to join Voice in Mind and she spotted that strength. And she said to me, you've got a real skill with public speaking. And I was a bit like, have I? I don't have. I... <laughs> You're talking a load of rubbish. And she empowered me by picking up on that strength. And, you know, since then, I've gone on to do so many amazing things and be so lucky to be able to have my voice heard at these, you know, wonderful things like this keynote speech at the Children and Men uh, children and young people's mental health summit all these kind of things that i've got just because that strength was noticed by someone and that strength was um appreciated by someone so uh, yeah so i suppose my little challenge thinking about all of this which i always say whenever i've got the chance is treat a young person as an expert and allow them to take the lead mm. and when you genuinely listen out for what their strengths are as well as what their best hopes are what do you notice so that's a little thought to take into uh, whatever you want, you know, whatever you want to take that into. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's sort of a bit about um, Voice in Mind, a bit about how SF fits in. Um, and I just sort of was going to then pass to a little Q&A session about, uh, about my work. So, yeah, if anybody has any thoughts or queries about that, far away. Will, can I jump in? Oh, I was uh, yeah. going to jump in. Oh, go on, Tara. 
<laughs> Let's not argue over Will. Go on. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just think it's really, really interesting, you know, obviously to to hear it from. Obviously, I've heard you speak and done lots of things with you, but yeah, actually yeah. sort of to hear it like this from your perspective, very much that, you know, this is led and put together by you. Yeah. And I just um, I, well, it's just really wonderful to hear. And I just think there's such an important message that you're sharing in in and and particularly that importance of noticing um, young people's strengths and it's almost like isn't it taking time to mm. to to notice and not only to notice it but to say it but to act on it yeah. and yeah. then to give opportunity and then almost I don't know how you feel but that that, that people then can just step back. You know that you do, you can just let people, young people, by noticing, amplifying their strengths. You know, yes, creating some opportunities, but then actually you can just step back and leave them to it, which I think is pretty SF as well. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it's exactly sort of you know like the film process with Boys in Mind. You would sort of get this little group together of people that wanted to be involved, and that's a strength in itself that they want to step out and do something. And that's that strength that perhaps other people might not notice. But then it's, you give them the tools and then you step back. It's not about you. Uh, do, it's, it's really about them. They're the expert in their own change and they, they know what they're on about. Mm -hmm. It's about putting them at the forefront of it. And mm -hmm. I have to say, uh, I am hugely in appreciation of all the, the adults that I've worked with because it's a conscious decision to do it like this because it's very easy just to go, oh no we'll just do it the normal way and that that's gonna be fine but i think the people that i've been so lucky to work with have seen the power that this can have when young people really are permitted to and to to, to take this sort of um expert stance and mm. so i've been so lucky to work with so many people that mm. do that yeah yeah and people that hugely value your your input you know and genuinely um do i think uh, yeah i think actually the voice that you have within the solution focused community um as a young person has has made a huge difference and is sort of changing the shape of it in some ways particularly around equality for lgbtq plus communities and you know and young people thank you I was going to ask another question, but Aisha can go now. No, I mean, I just, no. <laughs> I, I, you, you know how much you inspire me, and it's not actually because of the knowledge you have, although, you know, you have quite a lot of knowledge. It's, it's your passion for it um, that really, really stands out for me, and your openness to learn, to adapt, to listen, um, to inspire. Um, and I don't think you actually realise how much how how much you're actually teaching us by having these conversations um and every time i've spoken to you even if it's for two minutes going well 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 on the phone you're always so calm and collective and yeah you know it's gonna be all right um so i can just imagine the difference that you are making when you are public speaking and when you are talking with your peers and and everybody else around you that whether you realize it or not the aura about you um is you can't you know it's quite addictive bless you um, and you're a lovely person to have around when you've had a really difficult day with difficult clients and you just call will and i just think i used to call tara but then you came into my life will and now <laughs> yeah I jackie i'm not even, yeah jackie i'm not even lying it's the truth uh, but but I, but i think what whatever you're doing just keep doing it because the difference that you are making is is we can't even quantify it because these are the early stages mm. Thank but you. i can it, only imagine it, it, it every time you say that, it means so much to me and i i can't put it into words because i value this is the thing i, I don't know what it, i value everybody else's input so much that it doesn't feel like my i don't know 
I value everybody else's input so much and to hear that back is like, you know, you're doing it right kind of thing. And so it's, it's really powerful to me to hear that. But I suppose I've often wondered why, because for some, for me, it just sort of feels like I'm just sort of saying what is what, you know, I'm, I'm just sort of saying what I, I feel. And I often wonder why it is so impactful. And I, just, I think it kind of goes back to, I was lucky enough to be supported in SF and, and it's the only approach that I know. And I was lucky enough that those kind of SF mantras, I suppose, or, or, or thoughts of, and reflections on my own strength and validations and all these kind of things come back to me when I'm, you know, having problems or I'm having mm. times when I'm low. And so I'm so, I'm secure enough in myself and I am, I suppose, yeah, confident enough in my own ability and confident enough in my own identity and all these kind of things because I was supported by SF. And that's why I sort of want to toot the horde of SF at every opportunity I can do, because I think the power that that could have for so many young people, um, if it's really authentically driven into, driven, that sounds a bit dodgy, put into, given, you know, offered into schools and all these kind of things. I just, I mean, yeah. how, how frustrating is it for you knowing how well it works and the impact that it's had on you and your friends that other schools haven't been open to uh, being more SF? Uh, I remember actually when we did our FBS chat, I was a bit like, I sort of joked, I think, oh, if, it, you know, if it's not working, I might as well just try another thing. Was, you know, it's a very nonchalant kind of comment. But I, I suppose I could appreciate it because they haven't, not a fault of them they haven't um, you don't necessarily appreciate the power that it can have because they haven't experienced it and so it's important that we can actually get out to all of these schools and show them the power that it can have rather than just saying oh no that you know they oh someone else has entered the waiting I'll do it I'll do it don't worry no okay <laughs> it's important that we go out to schools and um are able to go with this open mind and it's not that we're evangelicals and we're preaching that the solution focused approach is the right thing to do we know it's it works and we know it's the thing that is sits well with us but it's important that we offer it as a mm. as a, a tool because that's inherently solution focused to do that you know it's, we're offering it we're not the experts we're offering it as a tool to the expert to let them mm. do with it what they may so i suppose it's important that we go into schools and we make sure that we can get this tour to schools offer it to them and then kind of leave them to it i suppose mm. and you know we're, we're there if they need the support but it's just yeah i suppose so it's more about really widening the reach and getting mm. people involved in it because Is again it? that sorry no, no. because again i think that would have the impact that it would get more people like me, who are young, that are passionate about this approach because they've experienced it both ways, mm. to be to know of it. Yeah, and that's something that I was going to ask. You know, how do we involve more young people? Mm. You know, mm. um, because a lot of us would have worked with young people, obviously using the solution focused approach, and you know, are we asking enough young people? are they interested in training are they interested in finding out more you know particularly those young people that we might be seeing as you described first experiencing it in a one-to-one -one capacity mm. and then you know how i'm interested you know to, to think to hear from you how do we do that how do we kind of actually invite more young people is there something that we could be doing differently that would draw more young people into um the solution focused approach that they then can really advocate it within their school environments and their communities and be part of the network as well. Mm. Yeah, that's a very, very good question. Um, it's, it's my kind of conundrum, really, because I've been asked it a few times, what can we do, you know? And it's... <laughs> It's a question of just, I suppose, furthering our reach and 
getting no, I suppose the power. Let me think about this. The the power that I've seen through Boys in Mind when we've had a real impact and when we had a real impact at Beach and Clear, for example, was when we had relatable figures. And when we had someone that was their friend or was someone their age talking about mental health or talking about X, Y, and Z that they could then relate to and then go, oh, I'm like, you know, I'll give this a try or I'll talk about it. So I suppose it is making sure that young people who might be interested in SF see another young person interested in SF. And so I, the thing that I'd like to do, and I, I discussed this when we did the FBS chat, was actually sort of maybe set up a network or something like that of young people who are into SF and start creating and getting this momentum to um, showcase it to young people, to really show that, no, you don't, you, you can be a young person and be able to do this kind of thing and to advocate for it and take it into your own life. And so I suppose it's important that we just have young people at the forefront of being able to show that, if that, sorry, I don't know what I'm saying, the young people at the forefront of being able to show that uh, you can do this kind of thing. And you know you can be involved in this and do this change. Oh, I don't know. Mm. That's a bit of a niche. No, I think Sorry. that makes a perfect. I think that's, it makes perfect sense. You know, getting mm. an, and a, a young person's network, um, inviting people into that specifically. I think sounds like a really, really good idea. And what could we do differently? Do you think, as kind of the oldies? <laughs> I'm talking about myself, I shall not. <laughs> what could we do differently, do you think? You can't call yourself of... an oldie, Tara, because you're not that much older than I am. I was going to say, none of... <laughs> What do you mean you were going to say? Sorry, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> I... I... Yeah, what could we do differently that would enable that to happen, do you think? I think it's been so incredibly useful that you know that the, the, the people I've worked with have put me to the forefront and always mentioned about youth leadership and always championed that. But I guess hmm. I don't know. I suppose it's about <laughs> using the platform perhaps that you have as an adult to and i'm saying this is a you know it's it's been happening already in this kind of continuing manner it's about using the platform that you have i suppose as an adult to bring me up to that sphere and then allow me to shout about getting young people involved so it can almost have that effect on other people so i suppose it's yeah it's a it's a using the platform that you have i suppose to to elevate other young people who don't have the um perhaps the the opportunities that you might do uh, so it's, it's not me kind of um trying to you know go um be rude in any way it's just sort of saying that you know inherently you, you'll receive sort of more opportunities i suppose as a as an adult and as a professional where you have these conversations and so bringing and providing that platform for young people and making sure that you're consciously involving young people in that, I suppose, is the important thing, I guess. I'm seeing an FBS sort of kind of mm. something that, yeah, maybe it's be a really good platform for that mm. that I'd love to be a part of. Mm. Yeah, let's set a date. <laughs> yeah. Right. If I'll you ever just... decide to move to land, then we'll. <laughs> London. You'll have a, you'll have, you'll have a job here for you. <laughs> yeah, I'll get rid of my colleague Joe, and you can take. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll have Joe. Send Joe <laughs> down here. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I I I really like to like. I'm looking to set myself up for self employed and all this kind of stuff at the moment. But whether I do, you know, whether I perhaps set myself up with a wider goal, with that kind of goal in mind with the goal of getting more young people into SF and really doing it like that. 
I don't know, food for the thought, really. Food for the thought? Food for thought, really. Um, Maybe writing a book that they can read in school. Just saying. Just throwing experience. that one out there. Just throwing that one out there again. <laughs> You've As said it, this, I've... and I said, yeah, that's a good idea. Didn't do it. <laughs> I can't see your notebook coming out, though. Right, where the blimmin' else my notebook? Mm. <laughs> oh, that's a sheet of paper. <laughs> yeah, I, I've written that down now. There we go. It's just written down, it's got to happen. That's the rule. Mm. Mm. Jackie think... said so. I didn't say it. Jackie said it. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie and I are on the same page. Yeah. So I suppose mm, it's. I've been so fortunate that I have these adults in my life who are willing and really listen to me and really value that um, drive that I have, and so and do it to to, to bring them up. And it, I suppose it's again with the whole equality thing. It's not about sacrificing any of your own sphere that you're in it's about just elevating the people who are, are sort of less opportune uh, have less opportunities mm. than you to, to to that space and that's again say with the conversation about sexism it's not about men losing some kind of privilege it's not about men losing something it's about bringing women up to um the the, the level that men are at and it's again it's I then go back to it's not men doing that for women it's about supporting women to do that themselves um, because they're the experts in that kind of conversation so it's not for me to tell them how to do it or not but anyway that's a whole other cut of fish but yeah so I suppose it's not about taking anything away from adults it's about just making sure that young people are given the opportunities and consciously really given the opportunities to to toot the horn of SF at these high echelons of of, uh, places so I don't know that's what I think. <laughs> so, what thinking about marginalised young people and mm. thinking about access to, yes, yeah, to harder to reach, I suppose, mm. children and young people, and just the kind of importance of that and the difference that SF can make in their lives I'm just interested to know kind of your thoughts on that and I don't know I'm kind of seeing this network as being something that could be far reaching in that sense what are your thoughts I think on the wider conversation of accessing hard to reach people and Aisha's an absolute expert at this but social media is the key to that <laughs> so you nod your head there <laughs> and and that is the key i think and and that is i think something that people are really um attuning to as we've been going th- obviously through covid they've realized how powerful it can be to reach people who wouldn't necessarily be reached by a rich state conferences like this conference for example um that doing things online and social media can have but then infusing SF into that, I suppose, infusing SF into things that you can produce online, infusing SF into um, resources and to, to um, linking it to social change and linking it to all these kind of topics that will really sit well with young people can just have that impact and be like that light bulb moment where somebody goes, oh my goodness, this is exactly what i am thinking of and this is the way that you know i should be going and then it starts them off on that journey um so i suppose yeah it's about i suppose going through social media and using the internet and using online resources to, to get to them in the first place but then by doing that in sf and combining it in ways which i'm always looking for in say society or or discussions around education or or, or um, social change, infusing SF into that is then that sort of path towards a light bulb moment for someone, I suppose. Mm. And that I suppose is a really uh, you know doing say this kind of network of of young people who are into SF and producing uh, SF resources that re- related to social change and all these kind of different things I think is perfect I'm, blimey, I'm actually thinking of this this is an actual perfect way 
of approaching that kind of dialogue because it is a you know you can brand it as that and say this you know this is for young people done by made by young people and again it's all about young people so they get inspired by it i suppose oh get me pen out (laughs) (laughs) write that down (laughs) you've got all these witnesses here now will and i've recorded this (laughs) and it's recorded yeah. So what would be your first small step? <laughs> what sign would tell you? <laughs> hmm. I think coming up with a oh I don't know really actually. I I've got my target audience, which is young people. I've got what my best hope is to get them involved in SF. I suppose it would probably be working out a name, really, because then it can go on to set up a little social media account. Then it can go on to put the resources out. And then it can go on to setting that up as an actual company. And then it can go on to all the different things that it does. So I suppose it's working out a name, which is something I've been pondering about for a lot. So... I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> just thinking of names. I, I, I've just stopped and started thinking about it. The first thought that came to my head, which is not good, by the way, is will affect. Oh, that's interesting. Will affect. Will affect. You know, you've got will oh, I am. The will affect. The oh. will affect. I'm You're sure it's welcome. A bit tooting my own horn, I have to say. But uh... Jackie said yes. If Jackie <laughs> said yes, then we're done. The will effect. Right, I'll write it down. I'll write it down. What do you mean? No, it's, it is the will effect. It's, <laughs> that's it. This is it. Set up the company now. <laughs> the will effect. Yeah, because imagine, imagine, imagine this. You've got the mm. name. You've got a logo. You've mm. got a YouTube channel. You know, you're going into transition groups at school, in schools. You're mm. kind of motivational speaking for GCSE years, talking about mental health. Blah, 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 blah. Because that's when self-harming rate goes up. That's when mm. school refusing rates go up. Mm. Um, depending on the area. I know in some schools it's self-harming. Other schools, kids just stop going to school. Other schools, all these friendship issues, just it's heightened. But, you, you know, just that motivational um, speaking um, and some one-to-ones can make a huge difference. And we are Zoom, Zoomaholics. Mm, you don't exactly. even need to have to travel anymore. You can just be on a screen. Mm. Mm. It's, it's the will effect. Cool, that's, that's good, that. That's good, that. Get to you. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll count you and in will... as my little advisor. <laughs> yeah. You know, and Will, from our perspective, you know, this is our hope, you know, for... Yes. It's, you know, it, it is... We're still doing the things that we're doing, but mm. each of us here are really passionate about handing on... Well, I don't mm-hmm. know whether that's even the right way to say it, handing on the baton, but it's about actually young people being involved yeah. uh, more and more, you know, and um, and just how important young people are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's that- almost like investing in will, us investing in will, time, listening, and all of that means that there's going to be a younger generation of SFers. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and that that young people are going to experience SF, and that they're going to experience it earlier, and that it will make yes. a difference. You know, and that yeah. also goes with the breath work as well. You know, about the power and the simplicity of, of the power of of your breath and the power of SF, and mm-hmm. you know, and actually whether young people want to use it or not, you know, it's their choice. But it's actually, a having having that there as a possibility, yeah. being invited to consider something, um, you know, better to to know and than to not know, and to you know, and obviously we feel particularly passionately about the difference that it can make in people's lives. Amazing. Well, I hate to cut it ever so slightly short because I know we could probably talk on for days, but I've just got a, the little film to show you just before we end. Um, so I'll just move on if that's okay with yeah. everybody. 
So this is next it, film is, is actually... Is it of me and Tara? Is it of me and Tara? <laughs> it's not. I hate <laughs> So this next film is actually dedicated to, um, to Lewis, who was a uh, young man in Northern Ireland who sadly took his own life um, during lockdown. Um, and his family and friends uh, raised £10,000 for Boys in Mind, um, which has gone to producing this next film and actually sort of um, producing a lot of webinars that we have been doing. So, you know, real huge um, thanks to Lewis's family and friends for, for really funding this important work. And it's it's been so, yeah, eye-opening. And it reminds me why I do the work that I do, um, really. So, yeah, this next film's called A Message to Young Men. message to young men. Strength comes in so many forms. Physical, emotional, mental, social. We all have a unique and individual way of recognizing our own strengths. What makes us who we are is wonderfully ours. It cannot be compared to our fathers, uncles, brothers, or cousins. It is our strength. And by making efforts to connect with our most vulnerable strength, our emotional strength, we can go on to reinforce and encourage the growth of ourselves. A society grows through diversity. And we, as young men, should hold our heads high in the knowledge that by allowing ourselves to confront issues regarding our mental health, we are stepping away from an oppressive and ignorant mindset and ensuring the future empowerment of other young people. We make these attitude changes not only for ourselves, but to benefit everybody in society. Be proud, be hopeful, be assertive, be respectful. Enjoy the things that make you a man and do not tolerate any suggestion that we all must behave in a certain way to fit the male stereotype. So that was um, a message to young, young men. And it's always a really impactful film, I think, when I, I see that one. And it's, it reminds, yeah, it reminds me why I do what I do and really, yeah, just goes to the heart of why I do what I do. So um, thank you to, to Henry, actually, who was our youth advisor who wrote those words. And then to Carrington, our youth advisor from Northern Ireland, who was actually a friend of Lewis, um, who, who read those words out. So. Yes. Will, do you have a link to that video? Yeah, I can send you. I can send could you, you. Could you maybe put that in the chat? Just. Uh, see, it's on our website. I know, but whether I copy a link. Yeah, well, that means I've got to go to the website. I don't have the link. I, I'll have to I stop get others to read books and summarize for me. I mean, come on. <laughs> I don't have a link off the top of my thing because All I can't right. escape this. But okay, I'll send e- email it to us. Yeah, I send you. Yeah. Um. But yes, but um, thank you all for coming to my little workshop. Uh, talking about the work that I do with Boys in Mind and a bit more widely, what my sort of hopes are for the future. Um. 
yeah and um you can sort of check out some more of our work with boys in mind at boys in as you can see on here check out our social media pages down at the bottom here um boys in mind and then we are actually quite a modestly funded organization so um if you know anything you can spare um we have got our just giving page up here um just giving campaign for boys in mind and anything you you know will really help uh, towards sort of future film projects and the, the strategy with this youth-led organization so mm. other than that enjoy the rest of the conference um and yeah thank you for coming along